I'm here with David Reif. He's the author of the new book, The Reproach of Hunger, Food, Justice, and Money in the 21st Century. Welcome to you. Thank you. Big subject. What was the impetus for writing it, tackling it? Well, I'd, I had written a lot over the past 20 years, really, about humanitarian aid and emergency relief. I bought, wrote a book in 2002 that called uh, A Bed for the Night, about the crisis of humanitarian action and sort of the wake of 9-11 and of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, it was sort of logical to think about development. In 2007-8, when the prices of food staples, the principal food staples, basically shot up, in some cases doubling and more overnight, it felt like uh, the global food crisis and the question of what we were going to, whether one could feed the seven billion of us who are now here and the nine billion who will certainly be on the earth in 2050, seemed like a, a central subject. But in the end, the book became a kind of critique of modern ideas of development uh, using the food system, the global food system as a kind of uh, a mirador is a kind of a, a kind of vantage point to think about it. I want to come back to that, but the 2008 period was it one of those moments where hunger was a news issue, right? I mean, it was a very it was a, a big moment for we're all focused on it. When you look at starting to explain the problem, st state the problem for us of hunger in the world. Today. Well, the problem is basically that food is both. The main, for the poor, food is the principal expense. For the poor, the global poor, I mean. Uh, and even in our countries, in rich countries like our own, the, the, if you look at the percentage of income a poor person spends on food and the proportion of income a middle class or rich person spends, I mean, it's very, very different. Food is, a, is an important but not a central expense for middle class and upper middle class people. It is a central expense for poor people. So we have, we have this huge number of poor people in the world, really poor people, who, for whom food is expensive and in many cases proper food, because my book isn't about famine, although I consider the issue of famine, but it's about malnutrition and undernutrition mm -hmm. of literally hundreds of millions of people in the world. So how do we because feed? most of us do think about famine, right? I mean, that's, that's the we problem. think about hunger. Exactly. And I think that's part of, I mean, it looks to me like that's part of what you're trying to steer us to some different thing. Yeah, I want, I do want to remind people that even these terrible famines that exist in Niger in 2005 and the Horn of Africa in 2011, these are events that are far less murderous than they were 30, 40, 50, let alone 100 years ago. And we're steadily getting better. The world system, I, I hesitate to use the word international community because it implies a kind of commonality of values that I don't, alas, think exists. But the, the global system has been pretty good at fighting famine. It hasn't been particularly good at dealing with chronic malnutrition or just with people who get enough calories but aren't getting enough nourishment. And the neurological effects of malnutrition and undernutrition mark you for life. There are all these studies, neurological studies, that really show that uh, if you're not properly nourished between the time you're in the womb and the third year of life, your life chances are, are not good. Well, so that's where we get to back to your critique. Part of the critique is about um, development and anti-poverty programs, including those by well-known figures like Bill Gates, the Gates Foundation. What's, what, what, what's, what are they doing wrong, in your view? Yeah, I always feel in this that I want to be very quick to say that I'm not somebody who ascribes bad motives to, to anyone involved in this system. I mean, there are states that have behaved murderously. North Korea is an obvious example. Right. But, but I think I'm very critical of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but I'm also very respectful of the motives behind it. I think everyone is doing what they're doing out of good intentions, but, and it's a huge caveat, I think that the Gates Foundation and the World Bank under the new director, President Jim Young Kim, and, uh, and our, our big aid agencies and, and the U.S. Agency for International Development, et cetera, et cetera, they all think that hunger is largely a technical problem. In other words, we know how to, that what they say is, I'm, I'm you know, oversimplifying, but, but just for 
the time we have. Uh, we know what to do about hunger. What we need is the money and the political will. It's largely a technical problem. And I think they're thinking like engineers. Mm -hmm. They're thinking in problem-solving terms. They're assuming that the fundamental issue of hunger is production and access in the sense of literal access, whereas I think the fundamental problem is politics. It's a question of justice. It's a question of inequality. And I don't think any of the mainstream solutions that are being put forward address that. And I, what, I, what, what, what would a justice-oriented solution be? What does that mean when you say it's politics and justice? Well, it would be, first of all, saying that if people don't have access to food, it's not because there isn't enough food, because most of the time there is. It's because the pricing system, it's because uh, governments don't make food a priority, and they leave it to the private sector, to aid agencies. I mean, one of the phenomenon, in a way, I said, when we started our conversation that I'm really talking about development as a whole mm -hmm. and using the global food system as a kind of vantage point. Uh, you know, the development world has been taken over by business. And I don't mean it, again, in a sense of some nefarious conspiratorial motive. I'm not Naomi Klein. I don't believe in that explanation. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that businesses, that the the, the conventional wisdom in the, in the development world is that business does things better than the state. Mm. And I don't believe that. And the great example I give in the book, and I think is a great example, is Brazil. Brazil in the last uh, uh, 30 years, under both, 25 years really, under both neoliberal governments and socialist governments, it's not a left-right thing, has really brought a huge number of people out of poverty and has cut malnutrition and undernutrition rates radically. That was the state. It's because President Cardozo on the right and Presidents Lula and Dilma on the left made it a priority. That, I think, is what has to happen. And so, I mean, the, because the public sector has a mixed record as well on, on development issues, you're looking for the right balance between public and private. Public oh. funding, private investment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, I, it, if I thought you know, the, the revolution was imminent, uh, I might not. You're smiling. So you, because you, you, that's you're where smiling. I differ, even though I'm very sympathetic to people like Naomi Klein and others as in terms of their passion and in terms of their critique. I just don't see the capitalist system. We're sitting here in Miami in this, what's again a boom town. Uh, I, I don't see it ending, so that's not would be very useful if you're a hungry person today saying that maybe 50 years from now another system will be possible doesn't seem likely to me we have to work with what we're doing i just think basically the balance has gone wrong that maybe it was too imbalanced the state-centered system of 40 years ago but the business-centered system of today i think is equally imbalanced and in any case even with philanthropy it's just a point that'll be obvious to your viewers, I mean, Bill Gates is a good guy, I have no doubt, but he's accountable to nobody. Mm -hmm. And that's a serious thing, that democracy deficit. Just, we just have 30 seconds. You, you tackle big subjects. Do you know what the next one is? You know, I've written a book that will be published in the spring by Yale about political memory, a critique of ah. political memory called In Praise of Forgetting, which tells you what it's about. <laughs> okay. All right, David Reif's new book is The Reproach of Hunger, food, justice, and money in the 21st century. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate